What is up, guys? Welcome to week two of the NPL Miners. This week, the Montreal Habsols are taking on the Houston Soul Rockets, coached by Adam or the Bees Knees, uh, somebody that I've mocked with quite a bit, but I don't believe that I've actually ever played him in league format up until this point. So let's go over his team real quick. He's got a Mew, which is a Zemon, uh, Skarmory, Mega Altaria, Nihiligo, Serena, Diggersby, Jellicent, Blaziken, Bisharp, Electabuzz, and Articuno. Now, the first thing that I noticed right off the bat is that he has a Skarmory, which means that Bulu is not going to be doing anything this game. So I will not be bringing it. Uh, the next thing that I noticed is that he's got a couple of really big threats, uh, namely Nihiligo, Diggersby, uh, Mew, specifically because of its speed tier. It outspeeds a lot of my team, because uh, as you guys know, my team is not too fast. That is the one big complaint with my team. And uh, a Z Mew is very scary to deal with, especially a Calm Mind variant. Uh, so I'm going to have to be very weary of that. And uh, another thing that I noticed is that his team is extremely weak to Victini. So uh, I'm going to be bringing Victini this week, as you guys see on your screen. It's the first Mon on the team. Um, it's got V-Create, U-Turn, Bolt Strike, and Trick. I'm running a Choice Scarf set. Trick is there so that if the Skarmory, for some reason, wants to switch in on a U-Turn, uh, or if his uh, initial switch in is something like uh, Jellicent or Electabuzz, I can get rid of their item. And uh, all of those are very nice without uh, their initial item, especially Electabuzz without its, um, its EV Light. So uh, that's going to be kind of nice. Plus, there wasn't any other move that I could think to put on Victini that would make it... Um, any any better in this matchup there was nothing that stood out to me so uh, I guess I could have run Zen headbutt for his uh, Nihiligo and his Blaziken uh, but realistically V create already does a lot to those so uh, I'm not too worried about those uh, as you can see the speed tier is 296 this is enough for Articuno uh, it also beats out things like Diggersby, Mega Altaria, uh, Max Speed Skarmory, Mew if he wants to speed creep certain things like my uh, I don't know my Cresselia or my Mega Blastoise I'm, I'm beating all of those out so uh, that's why I decided to go with the speed tier and max attack adamant with a little bit of HP investment, of course. So uh, this is uh, our flare for this week. Next up, we have Eric. This is my check to his Mega Altaria and a couple of other of his uh, physical attackers, uh, namely Blaziken, things like Bisharp, um, Diggersby. So we're running uh, a lot of defense. We have a lot of speed on this thing because uh, initially I wanted to outspeed Skarmory and beat a little bit of speed investment on it. Uh, because I did have Taunt initially on this, and I, I kind of should have reiterated the set a little bit and made it more defensive, uh, because things like Diggersby and Altaria can be huge threats uh, with Dragon Dances up, uh, or just Diggersby spamming return. Uh, if it's banded, I, I don't take it. So, uh, yeah, uh, I should have probably reconsidered the speed on this, but either way, I'm rocking uh, Will-O-Wisp Toxic, uh, Paint Split, and Clear Smog. Toxic is more so for the Mew. Um, if I catch it on a switch, I don't get poisoned, and it gets put on a timer, which is very nice for my team, as you guys are going to see later. Uh, Will-O-Wisp is there so that I can burn the uh, Skarmory, the Mega Altaria, Diggersby, any of those, uh, Bisharp. Uh, Pain Split is to be able to keep some uh, health on this thing. And Clear Smog is specifically for the Altaria once again. Uh, if it gets up defense boost through Cotton Guard, uh, Will-O-Wisp isn't doing anything for me. So I really need to be able to manage all of his setup uh, that he has access to with uh, Altaria. And last ditch effort, if I need it from you, I'll use it from you. Uh, doesn't do anything to Bisharp, obviously, but I can get rid of the Blaziken sword dan Swords Dances, Diggers Beast Swords Dances. Uh, it's more so there for uh, for boosts like that. So that's going to be wheezing this week, Eric. Uh, moving on, this is going to be our win con. Uh, Salamence, Grandina, Fly MZ, Moxie. We got Fly, Earthquake, Fire Blast, and Dragon Dance. The spread is a little bit wonky, as you can see. Uh, we got 96 HP investment. That's what I was left over with. Uh, after I factored in attack and everything. So attack, uh, adamant, uh, it's the same speed as Victini, so same reasoning behind that. Uh, the attack investment is so that at plus one, uh, I can knock out even a defensive Mega Altaria with a Flying MZ, so Supersonic Sky Strike. Uh, I can knock out a lot of his threats. Earthquake will be able to easily knock out uh, Blaziken, Nihiligo, uh, Electabuzz if it's not max defense Eviolite. Uh, Fire Blast is there specifically for the Skarmory because I know that thing is coming and it's gonna be the one thing in my way of sweeping, so. As soon as I get an attack boost up, I'm pretty much good to go uh, with my coverage just between Fly and Earthquake. I can click Raw Fly as well. Uh, he has a hard time switching into that as well, so uh, I'm not too worried. And uh, the 108 special attack investment is so that I can kill Skarmory after two Stealth Rock switches with Fire Blast, if it's fully physically defensive. So that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if I can get this thing up and going later in the game, it's going to be very nice. Uh, I do have something to support my sweep, so you guys are going to see that after. 
we'll close this up here. Uh, next up is Ren the Cobalion. Um, very similar set to what we brought last week against Jar, uh, except this time I'm running a lot of HP. A little bit of attack, um, almost insignificant spadef, honestly, and uh, enough speed for uh, non-scarf Nihiligo. So I can outspeed Mega Altaria, Nihiligo. It's one of my fastest mons, so it's just nice to have an outspeed Bisharp. Uh, Bisharp can't really go for dark moves freely on me if I have this thing around. It's going to hesitate to do so. Giving me a justified boost is not a good idea because um, my close combats will be hitting a lot harder if, if Skarmory is a switch in. Uh, Altaria won't be able to take an Iron Head even if it's defensive. Uh, Mew's going to have, have a hard time switching in if it's not fully defensive. So things like that. Taunt is there specifically for the Mew to prevent setup uh, or prevent Will-O-Wisp, Defog, Roost, all of that stuff. Uh, it's also there for Skarmory to prevent Defog and Roost, uh, Whirlwinding, that sort of stuff. And... Uh, Close combat Iron Head is pretty self-explanatory. He has a Mega Altaria and he has uh, Bisharp. He has weaknesses to um, to steel plus fighting coverage. So this thing is looking really nice. Stealth Rock, of course, is going to be able to chip away his, at his entire team, which is going to help out a lot. So uh, break potential sashes, things like uh, Nihiligo and whatnot. Next up, we have Loxer, the Mega Blastoise. So I decided to go with a uh, max speed, max special attack set this week. Uh, he's going to have to run a lot of speed investment on his Mew <coughs> to be able to outspeed me. He's going to have to run a lot of speed investment on his Diggersby. It's going to have to be... Uh, I actually speed, speed tie with Diggersby, so unless he's Scarfed, we will be speed tying. Um, faster than his uh, Bisharp, his Blaziken has to be max speed uh, to outspeed me, or just a little bit under max speed. Uh, his Electabuzz would have to run a lot of speed to outspeed me, so uh, all of those things. Really nice Dark Pulse is there for, of course, the Mew, uh, for the Jellicent, which is a spin blocker. Uh, it also hits the majority of his team neutrally quite well. Ice Beam is there for the Altaria to be able to catch it on the switch if that if he feels that it's safe to go into it. Um, it doesn't really hit anything else. It's really there for the Altaria so that I don't get set up on. Uh, with max special attack, I'm able to uh, deal out a lot of damage. I'm just going to make this mega real quick because I did un-mega evolve it for the game because I don't have access to battle area anymore, unfortunately. Uh, and then we have Earthquake on here. <coughs> Earthquake is for the uh, Nihiligo. For the same reasons as uh, Salamence, essentially. For the Nihiligo, for the Blaziken, uh, the Electabuzz. Mostly the Nihiligo, though, because it hits harder than water moves and it can actually Oko after a Rock Switch in. So that's why I decided not to put any uh, any attack investment in this thing. I decided to put it in defense, but yeah. Uh, now, right before the game happened, um, I noticed that one of my sets was a little bit weird. And I either couldn't remember why it was this way, or um, something happened on Showdown. But either way... Kisui, the Cresselia, is like clay. It's got 216 speed with a timid nature, uh, 248 HP, and 44 defense. Now, ultimately, I realized that the reason that I did this was to outspeed Altaria. And under any condition so that I could get up a Reflect before it could attack me. So that i take the least amount of damage possible, be behind Reflect, and if it got up a DD, I could switch into uh, my Cobalion and be able to take any hit, even an Earthquake, Iron Head it and weaken it down, or go into my Weezing and just clear Smog off the boosts. So uh, this is the reason that I decided to go with this. This is also my support mon for my uh, Salamence sweep later in the game. Uh, with, with screens up, there's almost nothing he can do. Realistically, the only things would be uh, either Hyper Voice or Return from Mega Altaria, Ice Punch from Diggersby, and Ice Beam from Articuno would be the only things that would straight Oko me through the screens because of my investment. So um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. My only attacking move is Moonblast. I don't want to outright let uh, Altaria do whatever it wants in front of me, nor do I want to let Bisharp in for completely free. So Moonblast kind of hits across his team pretty neutrally. I felt like it was the best coverage move. I don't want to have Psyshock on here and not be able to hit Bisharp, be forced out against it, uh, and maybe catch a Pursuit on the way out. Not very nice when I'm not rocking too much defense investment, but of course I am max HP, so I should be able to take it behind a Reflect, no problem. I also outspeed Bisharp. I outspeed Blaziken, all of these things, so... Um, very nice Cresselia set, ultimately, uh, that I built way before the game, and then I couldn't remember what it did, so, uh, let's hop into the game and let's see how it went. Alright guys, so, as you can see here, uh, no Bisharp, so that's quite nice for the team, in general. Uh, we don't see, um, what don't we see? We don't see Tsurino, we don't see, uh, Jellicent, Blaziken, or Articuno. So, the others came, obviously. Uh, we have Diggersby, Mega Altaria, Skarmory, Mew, Nihiligo, and Electabuzz on the other side. Uh, so, about what I expected, realistically, I did expect Mew, I expected Nihiligo, Skarmory to come, Mega Altaria, Diggersby, Electabuzz was kind of on the fence, but uh, it did end up coming, it's got a great matchup against me, uh, my only ground type is, of course, uh, Mamoswine, and Mamoswine does not have a good matchup against my opponent, so, um, 
I mean, looking at this, it kind of does, but at the same time, there is a Skarm there. It can take the hits quite well if it is physically defensive. Uh, Mew does outspeed and can hit pretty hard, so um, <clears throat> I figured that his speed tiers would be about what I expected. Uh, Mew would probably be outspeeding Mamoswine. Um, Diggersby, I wasn't sure what it was on Team Preview. Uh, I expected Scarf Nihiligo, but the way this game is going to play out, you guys are going to see that that changes uh, throughout the game uh, drastically. So uh, I'm just going to click play. We're going to see how this played out. So I'm going to lead off with Victini because I see that he doesn't have great Victini answers. Uh, Flare is going to be in against Diggersby now. I know that I'm faster than this uh, under any condition, even if it's Choice Scarf. And I'm going to be able to get off a U-turn, and that's exactly what I go for. I get a crit, a little bit unfortunate here. I do get off a lot more damage than I should have, but that would have pretty much put him in V-Create range 100% of the time, knowing that I'm faster than him. He goes for a U-turn as well onto my Weezing, and I'm able to take that quite nicely. He now goes into his Mew. Nothing I can really do about this thing. I did want to go for Toxic here, expecting him to expect my Cresselia, uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to straight up lose my Weezing and just lose to, uh, to Mega Altaria. So I am going to switch out into my Cresselia. As you can see, Shadow Ball doesn't do that much. And now I'm just going to go for a light screen against his Mew. And because I am faster than Mega Altaria, I'm going to get up a Reflect before he can hit me with a Return. So that's going to do minimal damage, 16%, absolutely nothing. I'm now going to go for a Moonlight as he brings in a Skarmory. I figured that he'd want to get rid of the screens as early as possible. That's fine because that actually doesn't reveal if I'm Light Clay or not. I figured that he would figure that I'm Light Clay regardless because he didn't see Leftovers, but he's going to go for Defog. I'm going to get in my Blastoise as a result. And uh, let me just pause it really right here. Sorry about that. Didn't want to cough in your ears. But anyway, I'm going to bring in Blastoise. I'm just going to go for a safe Dark Pulse right here because it hits almost neutrally across his entire team. And I'm going to see that this uh, this Electabuzz is actually quite bulky, uh, but I don't know if it's got a lot of special attack investment yet. So what I'm going to do is go into Cresselia, going to let him hit me with a Volt Switch. And I see by that damage that that is zero special attack. So I'm, I'm okay. So my Blastoise can technically stay in on it. He's now going to go into his Diggersby and go for a U-turn. I'm fine with that as now he's going to bring in a Skarmory, as I just go for a Reflect, and I can easily Moonlight up on this. I figured he would Defog on this turn, not wanting the screen to be up, and now I'm actually going to get it back up on this turn, um, because I figured that he wouldn't Defog two turns in a row, as he goes for Whirlwind, so that's a lot of his set revealed right there. He's going to get me into uh, Weezing, and right here, I really, really contemplated going for Toxic on this turn, but I was like... You know what, uh, let me actually just switch out and see what his initial play is on my Weezing. And he's going to go into his Mew. So this should have tipped me off that Mew was always a switch into Weezing and that I could easily go for Toxic. But unfortunately, that's not what I do. As he goes for a Psychic on my Cresselia, it doesn't do too much. As now I'm going to uh, get up my uh, Light Screen in conjunction with my Reflect. And I'm going to switch out here into my Cobalion. I know that I won't take too much from a Volt Switch. He actually ends up going for Toxic, revealing that, so that's very nice. I'm going to get up my Rocks here, and this is great for me because if his Skarmory comes in, it cannot defog in my face. Uh, I have Taunt, and I'm able to shut that down. I've already seen Leftovers. I know it, it doesn't have Mental Herb or anything like that. Freely taunt the uh, the Skarmory and be able to uh, sit here, essentially. Now, what I'm going to do, I believe, on this turn is go into... No, I'm just going to Iron Head because I expected him to predict my Victini uh, and go into something either like Nihiligo or uh, maybe Mew, but Nihiligo was more likely. Uh, and I'm just going to Iron Head. And now I'm going to switch out <clears throat> into my Weezing. And this is where uh, the turn prior where he switched into Mew should have tipped me off. Uh, but I didn't play on what had already happened, and I end up going for a Will-O-Wisp and burning the Mew instead of toxicing it, which is horrible for me, because if this thing ends up being set up, uh, then I'm not wearing it down gradually. I haven't put it on a timer at all. It's, it's canceling out leftovers. That's all I'm doing. And now my Weezing is burned, which is bad for me. So I'm going to switch out here, and I'm going to go into my Cresselia, uh, able to tank anything, and he, he does reveal the Calm Mine, which kind of scares me. My light screen goes down, and uh, I am able to get it uh, back up after he shadow balls me for not too much damage it's not too bad go for the light screen and i'm going to be able to moonlight up on the following turn i believe as uh, i think i contemplated this turn quite a bit i go for moonlight and he goes for another calm mine so i'm kind of terrified at this point uh that he has two uh calm mines up but essentially he's neutral because of my light screen it's his spadef that's worrying me so i'm gonna go actually straight into victini as he psychics which i was surprised about i thought either he's gonna calm mind again uh, or he's going to... I didn't expect Psychic for some reason. I, I just wasn't thinking Psychic, and I knew I could take Shadow Ball, so I let my Victini potentially get weakened, uh, but it's fine. I'm going to go for a V-Create here. Actually, sorry, I'm going to go for a U-Turn here. 
uh, on his Mew because I knew that V Create wouldn't kill from where I was at and Shadow Ball would destroy me. So I'm going to get in my Cobalion now and uh, his Altaria is forced out once again. He goes into his Skarmory. If I had Volt Switch, I pr probably would have clicked it right there, brought back in my Victini because uh, that's what I said at the beginning of the season was that core was going to be really annoying for opponents. But I end up going for Close Combat, expecting him to expect Taunt and just go for Brave Bird and damage me quite a bit. But at the same time, he's weakening himself and I can taunt him out of Roost. So uh, I can end up killing this Skarmory quite easily, which is going to open the door to my Salamence, uh, not ever having to click Fire Blast, which is awesome. Now I'm going to go for a Taunt as he brings in his Mew, so it's a little bit less of a threat this time around. It can't set up Calm Mines on me, so I am going to switch out into my Mega Blastoise, knowing that uh, I can take any hit. He goes for a Shadow Ball, gets a Spidaf Drop, and the Light Screen goes down at the same time. So this is actually kind of scary because he can go for a Psychic and deal a lot of damage, but at the same time, he would have to take a Dark Pulse. And this is one of the biggest things in my way of sweeping. So uh, I definitely just want to go for Dark Pulse right here because I know that he can't knock me out. He's going to bring in his Electabuzz once again, as I'm going to go for a Dark Pulse, and I'm actually going to get a crit on this turn and uh, lower him to 30%. So I'm now going to get out of here. I'm going to go back into my Cresselia, knowing that he has Toxic. No big deal. He goes for Rest, uh, and I expected him to have Rest on something like this. I've run Rest on Electabuzz in the, in the past. It's its one form of recovery, and it's actually really good. So he's going to stay asleep right here. He's going to go for Sleep Talk and get Rest. So uh, no big deal. Doesn't get a Volt Switch. Doesn't get Toxic. So I'm going to go for a V Create here as he brings in his Mega Altaria. And this thing cannot take two, apparently. Sorry about the scroll down. Uh, this thing cannot take two V Create, so I am gonna get a kill with Victini right here. Flare's first kill of the season. Very nice, looking pretty good. Doesn't have Bisharp to Pursuit Trap me, so all's, all's well so far. So I'm actually gonna switch out my Victini into my Cobalion. Uh, pretty much knowing that Hidden Power Ground could come out, because I have done that before in the past uh, on my own Nihiligo uh, for Victini plus a Steel combination. Um, and he does go for Hidden Power Ground, and by that damage, it's not Specs. So, I'm actually gonna stay in to scout the Scarf. But Adam makes a nice play and switches out into his Skarmory. It's pretty much safe for him, uh, always. I could have gone for Close Combat and 2 KO'd the Skarmory, but whatever. Uh, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that he switched out his Nihiligo. And this is going to be very crucial later in the game. So, I'm gonna go for an Iron Head. And I actually want him to attack me with Brave Bird. I want him to hit me with Brave Bird. Uh, but I end up uh, flinching him on the following turn. He tries to roost here, not gonna happen. Um, I go for Iron Head just because I don't want to lower my defense, um, and that after the Brave Bird damage, I can kill him with the close combat, but it turns out that I end up flinching him, which is not good for me. I'm gonna go for another Iron Head here on the following turn, I believe, as he does bring in his Mew, and Mew's not gonna take this too well, actually. Uh, it's gonna take 20%, and uh, if I taunt it, prevent it from healing up, and then Iron Head it again twice. I'll have it so low that I can kill it with pretty much anything, or Rock Switching. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, taunt as he tries to go for Roost, and uh, just gonna Iron... Sorry, just gonna Iron Head here on the following turn, as, once again, he brings in his uh, Electabuzz this time, and I go for Iron Head, all good, and uh, I check the Calcs, and I can actually two-hit KO this thing with a Close Combat. So, uh, that's what I'm gonna try to uh, try to do. Uh, he, even though he has his uh, Violite, I can still two-hit KO him with Close Combat. Does 47%, and I forget that this thing has static, and I start panicking now. I'm like, oh no, I let my Cobalion get paralyzed. I'm not faster than his Skarmory. I'm no longer faster than his Mew, and I'm definitely not faster than his nah Nihiligo, no matter what it is. So, uh, I kind of just screwed my Cobalion right there, and he's going to go for Sleep Talk Rest, and I know that he can just attack on the following turn or go for another Rest, so I actually have to get out of here and go straight into my Victini, as he does wake up and he goes for the Rest, so... Uh, not looking too bad now the f past turn the the turn before this when I got static uh, it kind of uh, put something in my head that I'd never wanted to attack this thing ever again with physical attacks and the fact that my Victini is scarfed meant that uh, if this got paralyzed I was done for so I'm actually gonna trick it a choice scarf and lock it into sleep talk and hope that he doesn't hit uh, volt switch on the following turn he hits rest here if he hits toxic or rest then my Cobalion is in for free, essentially, and I can still, I can pivot out if I want to, because he's locked into Sleep Talk, but he actually gets Volt Switch, so not looking too hot for me. Now he can bring back in his Mew, and I can't taunt it anymore, so uh, not looking great. I'm going to have to get out of here, and I actually end up going straight into Victini, I believe, 
Uh, no, I go into Blastoise because I know I can Dark Pulse this thing and I'm threatening it out. So he's going to go for Roost. Uh, now his Electabuzz is still a pretty safe switch and especially that it has a Choice Scarf now. Uh, he's going to get out of here with his Mew and he's going to go back into his Electabuzz. And now I know that he's going for Volt Switch on this turn. Uh, but there's not much I can do about it. So uh, I'm just going to switch out, go into my Cresselia. I know that I can take the Volt Switch quite easily. Did 13% before, but he actually goes for Toxic. Very smart play on his part. Uh, knowing that I would want to switch out on his Volt Switch. So my Cresselia is now on a timer. He goes into his Skarmory, and I actually predict that, knowing that uh, Skarm is the only thing that can take on my Cresselia relatively well. And I'm going to double out into Victini and basically claim a kill at this point. So I'm just going to go for V-Create. Now that the Skarmory is gone, I don't need to worry about the fog going off anymore. The rocks are up forever. Uh, Nihiligo's getting chipped, so is Electabuzz, and so is this thing. Uh, now he knows that I no longer have a Choice Scarf, so this is a pretty free attack for him. He's just going to go for Return on this turn, and it is going to 2-hit KO my uh, Weezing because I didn't have that extra defense investment, like I mentioned in the Team Builder. So uh, this is going to be a dead Weezing right here. So what was looking like a pretty good uh, differential at this point kind of got ruined by the fact that I tr Choice Scarfed. I tricked a Choice Scarf over to Electabuzz. So uh, now he's going to bring in his Mew on Microcellia as I get up a Reflect. Uh, I'm going to want to get up a Light Screen on the following turn because it's going to allow me to deal with his Mew uh, a little bit better, but I actually switch out. Ex sorry. Uh, I'm going to go straight into Victini because I know that I outspeed him, and he's going to go for a Calm Mind, and uh, by what I was calcing, um, if he wasn't, if he didn't have any sort of defensive investment, if he was just max HP, then I could V-Create and, and knock him out here. The roll was 68.6, I believe, uh, to 77, something like that. Uh, but I go for V-Create, and it doesn't knock him out, so that it reveals that he has defense investment, and he is going to go for a straight Shadow Ball and uh, knock me out. Very good play on his part. Um, well, not knock me out, but he will on the following turn. I'm going to stay in with my Victini because I can't let him roost. Uh, I can't let him call mind up again if I switch out, so I need to attack him straight up. He's now at 8%, though, and I go into my Blastoise, and, and this is actually pretty bad on my part. Uh, I didn't notice that Mew was faster than my Blastoise, and I was convinced that I was faster, but it turns out that he sped crept probably my Mammoth Swine uh, from the looks of it. And uh, yeah, uh, Victini outsped, but Blastoise doesn't, and he ends up psychicking me. And my heart sunk a little bit, and I was like, oh my god, if he had roosted there, I was kind of screwed. The game was over. So, yeah, that was uh, that was bad on my part. So my Blastoise is in now, and he's going to go into his Electabuzz. Uh, if he wants to knock me out, he has to Volt Switch, which gives me initiative, which is nice. So I'm going to let him do it. going to let him knock out Loxer. It's all good. Uh, Loxer got a kill. And uh, we are going to go... Uh, he's going to go into Diggersby now, and uh, I'm going to go into Cresselia. And this is my game plan here, guys. My Reflect has two more turns. So what I'm going to do is set up a Light Screen then Moonlight on the following turn, and then Reflect again once it's down, and let my Cresselia go down. This is going to open the door to my Salamence. If he clicks anything other than Return here, he's not doing enough damage to my Cresselia. And if he clicks Ice Punch, I can go into Cobalion. So I know that he's going for Return, so I'm just going to Light Screen up on this turn. His Return is doing nothing because he is Choice Scarfed and not Banded, uh, and I'm going to... Uh, now, like I said, go for the Moonlight. The Toxic isn't doing enough to me to where uh, even a crit return would be able to knock me out. So I am just going to go for the Reflect on this turn. And because I'm now down to, I believe, 20% after the Toxic, uh, then 21, excuse me, uh, he pretty much has to stay in at this point because I will go down regardless of what he does. And he ends up going for return. I go for Moonblast. I weaken him. And uh, I stalled for like 15 seconds. I was like, why did Diggersby lose health? Because I skipped the turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't see my moon blast hitting him. So I was like, is he life orb? Like, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> so he ends up at 19%. This is quite nice for me. I can now bring in my Salamence and set up a Dragon Dance uh, on his return. He does not crit me. He would need a crit to kill me here. Now, I actually end up misplaying um, because from the earlier turns, Nihiliko doesn't look Scarfed. And he's got a Scarf Diggers. So in my head, it's not Scarfed Nihiliko. It's something else, and he switched it out on my Kabalion because he was afraid of Iron Head. He could have easily knocked me out with the Hidden Power Ground. The reason he switched out, actually, was because I had a lot of Hidden Power Ground responses. One of which being Cresselia, the other one being Weezing at the time. So, um, that's the reason, that's the real reason he switched out. Now, in my head, if he returns again, if he doesn't get the crit, I win. So all I need to do is attack. Uh, so what I do is Earthquake here. On the switch to Electabuzz, had I Dragon Dance there again, guaranteed game over. No matter what. Nothing he could have done, no, no set in the world would have been able to outspeed my um, my Salamence, not even Max Speed Scarf Nihiligo, so if I would have DD'd there again, it was guaranteed game. But now, his Nihiligo comes in, and I'm thinking, if this thing is actually Scarfed, there is a role where um, 
well, not behind a light screen. If it's Scarfed, Max, Special Attack, Modest, uh, there's a slight roll, actually. I'll bring it up for you guys uh, on my other screen here. Scarfed, Modest, which he shouldn't be because I'm a Salamence, right? But it can do a maximum of 63% to me. And as you see, I'm at uh, 66. So actually, there is no roll, but that plus Quick Attack would kill me. However, Quick Attack would never do enough to Cobalion. So I had the game in the bag regardless. Uh, I end up going for Earthquake, knocking out the Nihiligo. He goes into Diggersby, goes for a Quick Attack. It doesn't even kill my Salamence, and Grandina ends up getting the final kill of the game. So three kills go to Salamence, two to Victini, and one to Blastoise. Uh, big part of my offensive core, getting a lot of the kills there. So good job to these guys. Uh, great game to Adam. I know there were a lot of crits. Uh, some unfortunate uh, sleep talk rolls on his part, uh, hitting rest, I believe, two or three times. Uh, and he did get the um, the Volt Switch when he needed to, though. So that prolonged the game a little bit, but uh, I'm not going to uh, call him out on that. That's not not even his fault. Nothing nothing of this game is his fault or my fault. But uh, definitely Earthquaking with uh, Blastoise was a misplay, a huge one. Uh, and I should have probably gone into Salamence to knock out the Mew with Earthquake. Uh, because then that forces in his Diggersby if it has Ice Punch, or his Nihiligo. So I'm able to go into my Cresselia and get up my screens again. So that was my better play, for sure. A little bit of a misplay. Didn't end up costing me because I was able to get back up the screens. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much GG, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Go check out my opponent in the description. As well as everything else NPL related, it's all down there. Excuse me. I'm having a, a hiccup fit right now. Uh, but yeah, go check out all those links in the description, uh, go check out Adam's channel, go see his side of the battle, uh, see what his sets were, cause I didn't really ask, uh, too into depth, I don't know if he had Ice Punch on Diggersby, uh, I don't know what his exact set on Nihiligo was, I only ever saw Power Gem and Hidden Power Ground, uh, we knew his entire, uh, almost his entire Skarm set, we knew his whole Mew set and his entire, uh, Electabuzz set, so I was, I was really curious to know what his Mega Altaria was, uh, as well as his Diggersby and the rest of his moves on his Nihiligo. So if you guys are as curious as I am, go check him out. And uh, so far we're 1-1. One one. I believe we are minus 2 though, so not a great differential. Uh, I definitely want to improve that in the next week. Uh, speaking of which, next week we are taking on... Bring that up for you. Uh, we are taking on uh, Fry's. Rotterdam Staraptors. Uh, we did play in March Madness. He ended up bringing the wrong team against me. Uh, <laughs> something that he hadn't even built for me. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it guys. Uh, again, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.